hello my bosom friends welcome back to my channel prayer all doing wonderful and are keeping in extremely good health and in perfect perfect happiness today i am in fine company we're joined by grogu and my sweater does say monday so should you get this video over the weekend it's because eager indeed I was or am to get this video to you and uh, eager indeed yes in the manner of Yoda so yeah without waffling too much let's dive into chapter 7 of why men love babes in total control of themselves chapter 7 is all about the secret playbook we all love secrets don't we secrets and how to look slimmer how to look skinnier how to be more attractive how to be more intelligent how to read more how to do this secrets of millionaires so we love that but instead we are tapping into the guy's side of things this is very much interesting oh yeah but before we get started i see some of you are actually purchasing the book according to my numbers from amazon i just want to say thank you so much but more importantly it's even better to have the book in i mean in your own hands and actually discover some of i mean learn or learn or unlearn and learn at your own pace and some of the things that i might be missing you might actually end up learning on your own and collectively we all can learn together so i'm very excited for that i think there's something special about actually holding the book and going through it yourself because it is going to unfold differently because we are all different souls isn't it things you suspect but never heard him say so here according to anonymous don't learn the tricks of the trade learn the trade and that is powerful isn't it because the moment you know how the game is played and what makes the game the rules the do's and the don'ts it's easier to to navigate isn't it whereas if you just learn the rules i feel like you'll be operating from a disadvantage and as we have progressed in the book we've seen that these tips now as we're diving deeper this is assuming the relationship has deepened and it has become a union it has become exclusive if you will or maybe it has progressed into yes you have had that talk and you're past that stage of wanting to impress each other or the first few dates this is now a full-blown relationship so going forward how do we navigate that and more importantly how do we learn from our past mistakes so she opens chapter 7 by us by saying that we women we assume that men don't have feelings or they're out of touch with their feelings and I think the disconnection happens when we expect men to be like us to sit through a chick flick movie and cry and talk about the movie be in that sappy mode whereas for us we are more i would say we are all more emotional as compared to guys so therefore just because they do not react to emotions the same way we do it doesn't mean that uh, they are out of touch with their emotions and going back to what sigmund said at the beginning uh, in chapter six about being in touch, I mean, understanding that in each and every man there is always and forever going to be that inner child, that three year old boy who assumes mommy is gonna run after me whenever I make a mess. Mommy, dearest, is going to forgive me if I ever do something wrong because she's mom. I mean, that's what mothers do, in, isn't it? There's always and forever that unconditional love. So the moment we start to understand that, that ultimately, Yes, they communicate differently, but deep down they're just ooey gooey and soft inside, just like all of us. But it's just a matter of how they express themselves. So now we're going to dive deeper into the 15 signs that a woman is needy. So sometimes we do these things without even knowing that we are coming across as being needy, isn't it? And also we've noticed that, uh, I, could, I mean, thus far in our journey we've not we know that the, when a w woman is in charge of her emotions she has that much more power and also more importantly she is in charge of herself so therefore the other person doesn't have 100 percent hold on her the woman doesn't wear her heart on the sleeve she comes across as less emotional and more appealing it makes the relationship go smoothly 
so here's the thing it's about not being i mean about not have it's not about being heartless it's just about holding some of those emotions to yourself don't wear your heart on your sleeve all the time it just comes across as needy if a man has to go to work let him go to work if he has to go play golf let him go play golf because you want to give him that space to do that which he wants to do but at the same time you're creating you're showing that you are emotionally strong enough in yourself you're emotionally intelligent enough to let him go do his own thing and not everything has to be about we 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 us 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 sometimes it's also about being emotionally stable enough or emotionally intelligent enough to give him his space number two is i like a woman who's quiet sometimes because you're not sure of what she's thinking about we've spoken about talking too much and overcompensating or trying to come across as super duper intelligent you don't need to do all of that sometimes it's about being in your quietness and ever listen to music like for example let's see oh the killers i love the killers a short at the night i feel like the best part of that song is when it's just the beat itself and you can just feel the hear the instrument hear the beat and it is utterly utterly beautiful and obviously the whole song and the beat and the music and the instruments it just ties in together so it's always in those quiet moments where you can just reflect and not yabba 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 too much because when you jam it yabba 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 too much it means that you are not even giving yourself a chance to to process your emotions or to think before you talk you just talking it's like verbal diarrhea isn't it so sometimes we have to be comfortable with silence like really i used to be one of those places people who were never comfortable with silence but i've noticed that the moment that i just quiet down a little i create a, that mystery you know that is not obviously too mysterious but that intrigue that excitement and it makes people wonder oh what is she thinking about and then the moment you talk and then you obviously provided you don't sound like half an idiot <laughs> but it's important to have those to be comfortable with pauses some women seem defensive or guarded and that can be viewed as in as an insecurity so here's the thing about being so guarded having your walls so up you're going to break down what happened in your previous relationship you're going to come up with a set of rules as to what your do's and your don'ts mostly on a first date <laughs> and that can be too much if you have your guard up you don't even know this person that is in front of you just because you had a nasty experience in your past relationship or previous relationships it doesn't mean that it's going to be the same with the new guy so throw away your rule book as to your do's and your don'ts your what you wills and will not because those things will kind of show up as the relationship progresses right but first few first few dates try not to be so guarded and try to be more open-minded so that this way if a fizzball is a fizzball it will show that it's a fizzball right point number four don't interrogate the guy it will seem like he's being brought in for questioning and examination don't do that because like i said in my previous point a fizzball will always be a fizzball because a fizzball's colors will always show isn't it so interrogation will come across as someone with control issues and so insecure it's just not necessary and also you don't want to be interrogated your know, past relationship how many what's your body count blah 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 nobody wants that let people open up when they want to open up at their own pace point number five i dated a, i dated a woman who loved to talk and talk would fall asleep talking would wake up talking so this guy said that she even went as far as trying to escape go in another room should in the bathroom sorry she said that he escaped and went, wanted to go in the bathroom she followed him in the bathroom and started talking through the crack of the door that is just too much 
to TMI. I mean, you have to let the data process, right? So don't just overload. Information overload is not sexy. Again, it's going to come across as someone who is insecure because you are overcompensating for a certain area in your life where you think you're lacking. I was saying that sometimes we talk out of nervousness or out of insecurities. So a woman who is feminine, who is in control of herself, she's not nervous, she's not intimidated, and she comes across as confident and she's comfortable in her skin, so she does not feel the need to overcompensate by talking nervously. And also this way, again, it will confirm that you are half an idiot if you keep on yammering too much. Point number six, one woman I dated was really needy. She needed constant reassurance every time you have family have friends a job this is so draining i think back to uh was it chapter five when we talked about being a babe in total control is about showing up as a full individual showing up whole and uh showing up confident in yourself you are still responsible for your emotional well-being you're still responsible for your confidence to confidence scorecard you are still responsible for for your well-being your wellness and if you're going to need assurance about your weight about your height about your thunder thighs about your big booty or small booty or the lack of a booty or too much booty it's going to come across as insecure because the idea is that we want to appear as the dream girl right so a dream girl is going to accept yourself despite your flaws because no one is perfect and also like i mentioned in chapter one that there's always going to be someone younger than than me taller than me skinnier than me or shorter than me or more educated wealthier comes from a fa fabulous family so at the end of the day i just have to deal with the cards i was dealt with and a woman who is who has done the work or doing the work because I feel like the work never ends she's going to show up in fullness of who she is despite her flaws because at the end of the day it's about working with what God has given you so don't look for reassurance all the time it can be exhausting and also when is it gonna stop <laughs> it's just a lot asking for another human being to do all those things for us if if your issues are extremely deep i suggest therapy therapy does help that's why you pay per hour because at least somebody's trained and they can figure out where you're coming from and where you need to go and the course of action one woman tried to change me <laughs> yeah trying to change another human being i mean i i know change is hard change is easier said than done that's why there are billions and billions of self-help books because change is hard because we are trying to overcome so many things. We're trying to overcome programming and insecurities, generational curses and self-inflicted curses and limiting beliefs. So there is a lot that takes when it comes to changing ourselves and then why should we put that same pressure on another human being i mean we just have to accept people the way they are if we don't like them the way they are we can always pick someone else i mean they're what over seven billion people on the planet when someone tries to get me to open up and i don't want to there is no way i'm get she's getting information out of me i will close up even more i i don't need a woman to help me back to opening up People open up when they're good and ready. You cannot force information out of anybody. Why are you the way you are? Don't turn into a Dr. Phil or nobody because it will just backfire because let it be, let it be organic. And also the thing is that once you have the heart, this is what I've learned. Once you have the heart, you have everything. A guy would naturally want to open up to you, but without you pushing because the moment you push definitely going to clamp and then you lose yourself and then you lose them as well in the process it really makes us happy when a woman let us go out with the guys without an attitude about it again this is about having your own life your own hobbies your own yeah even if it's scrapbooking even if it's gardening because if it becomes too weird too much it can be suffocating for anybody so the best thing to do is 
to have your own life so that this way when it's time for him to go watch the game with his buddies he can go when it's time for him to I don't know go to his friend's place and play some PS5 there is nothing wrong with that because it gives you also a chance for you to miss each other basically and it creates that that excitement when you get together and more importantly you will have something to talk about to cover up for those times when you run out of things to talk about 11 so basically these are the do's and the don'ts don't do these things like if you want to come across as feminine and as mysterious stay away from doing such things and again they seemingly seem innocent but they can be such massive turn offs then point number 12 when a guy talks about something it's over 30 seconds over 30 seconds sorry but for women it goes on and on and on and on again we are wired differently isn't it we love to talk about things and dissect them and see them from different angles and talk about our feelings for hours and hours while michael buble or michael bolton is playing in the background that is a big no-no like if you have something important to say again we have to see it from the male's perspective from a psychological point of view emotions aside so do what the japanese do like according to one of the one of their marketing tech uh techniques it's called pecha kucha pechachka pecha kucha i don't know how people pronounce it but my teacher said it's pecha kucha so it's a it's a when you're doing a presentation keep it 20 seconds per 20 seconds per slide basically so you get straight to the point say what you need to say be concise be precise and get it done with so that this way there's no emotional overload and and also this way that a man who's also doing the work can process it much easier because it's not a lot i've noticed even with my son as well when i go yep 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 too much he just <laughs> shuts down <laughs> you can actually see <laughs> that I'm being muted through the eyes so if you are in your power in your confidence in your confidence in your feminine energy you can tell when you've talked somebody's ear off because they just glaze over you know that look yeah so we don't want that we just want to pitch a kucha it and get it over with less is more because again we don't want to be seen as somebody who is a complainer a whiner somebody who just keeps on yammering yammering on and on and on and on, on it can be exhausting so keep that mystery to yourself and if you need to talk to your friend talk to your friend if you need to bujo bujoing does help like get a journal write down some of your feelings and also sometimes when you write things down you close your 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 journal you can go back to it and realize you know what it wasn't as deep as i thought it was and yes we need men who are sensible enough and much emotionally intelligent enough to walk through some of these feelings uh, with us and that is beautiful because we all want that safe place to be a place where we can vent a place where we can just lay our heads in the manner of uh samson samson and delilah <clears throat> So that's what Delilah used to do to get secrets out of um, out of Samson. She would put her head on on her his head on the on her lap and just stroke his hair, his locks, and and then he would just open up. You know, it was a safe space for him. So the same with us, the same with men, the same with women. We all need the place where we can let our heart rate sort of just calm down, where we can be mellow and calm and where it's regulated where we are not thinking that we cannot be safe here it's about knowing how to communicate so that we can have those outside environments and also a man who is also in tune with his emotions will understand that look there's something that is wrong and how can i fix this because a man already he is programmed enough yeah in that manner to be a fixer and he will know something is amiss definitely so this goes on to illustrate that a zebra cannot change its stripes and according to also I, one of the classes in psychology this was in development i should think is a zebra white in color does it does a zebra have white stripes or does he have black stripes 
<laughs> so that's something to think about when you think of development, isn't it? And also the same with men. We cannot force intimacy. This is what this chapter is illustrating. Intimacy is not something that can be forced. It has to be organic and it has to be over time. You know, it takes time. And more importantly, it has to be safe for you and for me. Can I fall? Will you catch me? And is it okay for me to fall? And and then reciprocity are you willing to give as good as you get and and then it just progresses as it should so according to principle uh, number 71 it says don't always do the same thing over and over again inside and outside of the bedroom vary it so that it doesn't become a predictable routine this is so much fun isn't it like you can't just keep on going for, let's say, apple picking. I mean, every day of the season is going to become boring. Sometimes go watch the rugby game with him as well and keep it spicy, keep it exciting. So after rugby, another fun way to obviously have fun and keep things spicy, you can find ways to crush tackle and do your touchdowns. <laughs> re-examine the goal lines <laughs> you get the picture or maybe drag him i mean go for yoga together and come up with your own asanas your own asana vari variations <laughs> so you keep it nice and exciting and again this way it there's always that element of surprise there's always that sense of mystery which just keeps things exciting for for or both parties involved i should say so how can we be more elegant and how can we keep that a bit of mystery in a relationship this is going to be extremely exciting because i do have what 15 let me see uh da, da, da. yeah 15 points how to keep things exciting and how to keep that mystery and yeah let's go and also keeping things a bit of a bit elegant i should say so uh, one guy says a woman should always keep the bathroom door closed closed when she's on the toilet i think it's really disgusting to watch a woman on the toilet and don't leave feminine pads and stuff around for the guy to look at either we don't even like it when we see douche commercials on tv so ladies keep it elegant close the door nobody wants to hear the bowel movements <laughs> And another guy says, I get a little turned off by a woman, by a woman who is too materialistic. Oh, this is a big one, isn't it? If she pays too much attention to what kind of shoes I'm wearing or what kind of watch I have <clears throat> or what kind of a car I drive, I will back off. So it's okay to like our designer stuff. I do. I'm, I'm a Taurus. I'm materialistic like that. I've come to terms with it. And yeah, but don't pinpoint and say oh my god you've got a rolex and you drive a lambo and it, it's just too much it just seem that it just seemed like you're after his worldly possessions instead of the little boy inside when a woman is jealous it can be a turn off one time i was on a date and this person with long blonde hair was in the car next to us my date accused me of checking it out it turned out to be a dude <laughs> I love her sense of humor. <laughs> well, there you go. So jealousy, again, like I was saying, that there's always going to be someone younger, prettier, skinnier, and peckier than, than you and me. So being jealous is just a disrespect to the person you are. And more importantly, according to Ianla, she say that it's it's just a violent act against self and oh my god speaking of ianla one time i had a woman i mean during the, this was during the covid um the pandemic the lockdown and um she used to have these kind of like sermons in the morning so i used to join in whenever i had a chance and there was a woman who sent a request you know like on those live chats and she says ianla how do i change my voice <clears throat> So that i won't come across how do i fix my voice so that i can sound more feminine yes that's what she said and then Ianna replied i don't know what you mean like can you elaborate more and and then she said well i don't want to come across as somebody with an attitude 
And Ianwa said, what is wrong with having an attitude? <clears throat> Sorry. And that stayed with me because sometimes it's just about working with what God has given you. And confidence is not about changing yourself completely or erasing all the parts of yourself to become this new unrecognizable person. It's just about working with what you have and being comfortable uh, with that and also so that if your man is going to be sitting on the wrong side and there's a blonde person and oh turns out to be a guy you cannot be jealous you know what I mean it's just off-putting and it immediately makes us come across as um, as insecure now we're down to the meat and potatoes as to how to tell if a man is in love and I think if you are in your feminine energy and you're doing the work you're healing and you're listening and also more importantly you're really listening to the gut as well from neck to down i think every woman knows like when a man is in love and also every woman knows when she's imagining ingredients that are not there so how do we go about it so these are some of the telltale signs you know a guy is in love when it's monday night and he chooses to spend Monday with you and he starts to pick you over his friends that's definitely one way to know that a guy is falling in love and then you won't be confused obviously and the moment you have to be asking is he or is he not you know he's not definitely so look out for these signs yeah when he seems to be overjoyed suddenly he's happy he seems different to his family and friends he seems to be more bubbly more positive less cynical than yeah he is in love you know a guy is deep in love when he starts to let his girl keep his keep her stuff her feminine bits and bobs in the bathroom drawer on the kitchen sink or maybe he create makes space in the wardrobe he has a shelf for you he has a couple of hangers for you then yeah definitely you get you got him away where, where he should be you'll start taking better care of himself you start exercising starting to eat better he's buying new underwear <laughs> yeah you know he's definitely falling in love yeah he wants to be in good shape emotionally physically financially all those good things you'll go out of his way you'll fly in to see you or drive in to see you the moment you have to go over to him all the time mm -mm, he's not yet there so if he's the one who is planning around buying the tickets well in advance making those reservations taking you to your favorite restaurant and buying you your favorite flowers if you mention something from your book you'll get it or if you mention a book to him he's gonna buy the book he's definitely in love the good thing is that some men are not into variety and i know we live in a swiping era now where you go on tinder bumble Instagram as well my god if you, you check out your DMs it's crazy isn't it it has become kind of like a dating site as well so if a man is in love he's not going to entertain other people he's just going to be disinterested dispassionate about scrolling he's just interested in you and then he's willing to do something out of character to please her he never thought of having children or getting married but with this woman he is willing to do all of the above because why he is in love and more importantly she won't have to ask she'll just know because actions speak louder than words there was something I read a couple of months ago it said that love is a way of betraying the person who is feeling it because it will make itself known and if a man is genuinely interested in you he is definitely going to keep on coming around he's gonna want to feed you want to take you out wants to treat you like a princess or a queen that you are or in the manner of Norman Bates part princess part queen <laughs> whatever tickles your fancy and more importantly it's not about overcompensating for the sake of a relationship or self-sacrificing for the sake of a relationship why because 
you will know when a guy is in love and also naturally you would would want to meet him halfway isn't it but it's only after he has proven that he's serious that he is a man who is willing to go the distance so babes in total control of themselves they never self-sacrifice and uh they don't yabba 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 too much what else they keep the mystery and if a man like i said is in love you'll make space for you you'll make room for you so yeah there you have it my darling bosom sisters we've come to the end of the video pray you enjoyed chapter seven it was packed with a lot of do's and don'ts isn't it and and yeah <laughs> i do hope you enjoy this video so take care of one another love one another and be kind to one another if nothing else and i shall be seeing you in my next video 